Chapter 17, Pathology, Summary In summary, pathology is probably the best place for us to undertake a major recap of what we have discussed up to now. We postulated that we can imagine ourselves as a spaceship passing through time. The spaceship is divided into two major sections, the engine room and the flight deck. The flight deck itself is divided into two sections, the part that we are fully aware of and the part which does a lot of the steering and guiding. We have called it the automatic everything. We are not really a spaceship, are we? We are a very complicated organism, far more complex than any ship guiding itself through time and space. Yes, we do guide ourselves through time and space, but we are much more than that. We are a combination of thoughts, feelings and behavior. In an automatic mechanism or non-human mechanism, behavior is an endpoint in itself and it should be highly predictable. In true automization, what happens is what happened and what will happen. Our deus ex machina is the epitome of Einstein's definition of insanity. To do the same thing and expect a different result. The machine obeys this principle. You, I and all others do not obey. We change, we experience, and we grow. Our behavior will be different with the same stimulus. In the human spaceship, thoughts, feelings and behavior are all reciprocally linked. There is even a thermostat on the feeling gauge which we call mood. Let's go in at the deeper and explain again how feelings are merely emotions with a thought attached. It would be more precise to call feelings an emotion with a cognitive representation that we can describe. When we do so, it is no longer an emotion, it is a feeling. The feeling will behave differently from an emotion. Emotions are stored in our subconscious. They are part of a primitive dyad, which conceptualizes, as physics does when matter is described in terms of particles and waves. Emotions do not have laws that constrain them. They do not have to conform to linear time and space. Emotions and their conscious representatives are faster than thoughts. Feelings allow us to react far faster than thoughts, giving us an evolutionary advantage. We are constantly storing what we have done in a retrievable manner. To do this, we have a very complicated mechanism going on. We need to sleep, we need to take our emotions, our feelings and thoughts, and store them in a meaningful way by dreaming. Our subconscious stores our experiences in a way that they can be readily drawn upon in our automatic everything mode. The automatic everything is in our non-aware conscience. The automatic everything contains automatic thoughts, automatic feelings and automatic behavior. The automatic thoughts consist of our ability to think automatically by continually vetting our surroundings and making suggestions. In addition, the automatic thoughts contain a memory bank of immediate memoirs and compendium of beliefs and rote learning. Automatic thoughts can compartmentalize wishful thinking, and when we are aware, we call these thoughts daydreams. Automatic feelings attach the appropriate colors that enable us to shift focus and act quickly. As we are hurtling through space, we observe mainly by our automatic cognitive processes, which together with previous experiences, throw up a series of possibilities of action. Generally, there is a decision made by the selection of the fittest thought. All this is done in the automatic everything. Let's emphasize again that we may not be aware of what is happening in the non-aware part, but we can easily become aware. As we develop, we go through several stages where we define ourselves through firstly, developing feelings. Then we go out into the world and learn again by trial and error, emotions and feelings, how we belong to the very different in many forms of our experiences and definitions. The child should, but so often will not, achieve the golden age where he can experience the joy of fulfillment as he explores without being burdened by the parent's anxieties. It is a burden he accepts and will repeatedly pay for. As a person, a religion, a football supporter, you name it, they all have norms, expectations and beliefs. They all become part of our automatic everything. When discussing pathology, we have seen how we can explain two kinds of psychoses, neurotic disorders, personality disorders, and behavioral disorders. To refresh your memory about the two kinds of psychoses. The first is when the separation between aware and non-aware is breached. The second is between the conscious and subconscious is breached. In the former, the thoughts have a logic in a second they are dreamlike. 
It is most important to realize that the child who never knew the golden age of happiness will ascribe his life aims to reducing anxiety. Otherwise, they will develop a seemingly mild personality disorder. They do not know happiness. They only know how to avoid misery. This personality disorder will beget the neuroses. The neuroses are inevitable. To cure the neuroses without changing this personality disturbance is an exercise in futility. I don't want you to be in the position where you can recite and go over all these things. Very shortly, in the treatment section, I will explain to you why I want you to be cognizant with what we are saying, but I do not want you to be a fully fledged disciple. I want this knowledge to be part of your non-aware conscious. If you want to go on to lecture about this, which I think would be very stupid, then you will have to go back and learn by rote. I am pretty sure that having read this and all the times before, you are cognizant of the fact that you need to go on to the next part, treatment.